on the couch here, and you in the middle, and then Richard can sit in the corner. Okay, so. Armand. Yeah, Sienna. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How's your English? Yeah, it's good. Good. Great. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's incredible how all you, most, most Dutch people seem to speak really, really good English. So it is there. Yeah. I suppose. Tell you. Do you want to. Um, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> they. Um, uh, do, you, do you pick up your English on television or, from, or just from school? or? Uh, well, we're actually from the international school here. Are you the international yeah. school? Are, yeah. are, you, are you Dutch or, or not? Well, uh, we come from all around the world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're international. Yes. yes. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Actually, it's good. We shouldn't be Dutch or English or French. We should be international. It's much more important. Yeah. 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 That yeah. fits with my. What do you, th do you agree with that? Yes. yes. Good. Ref ref yeah. ref we, we love refugees. <laughs> yes. um, do you think adults can be inspired by children? I think adults sh should and can be inspired by children. Um, it's funny, I, my, I've got um, grandchildren who are um, 18 months old and they, they um, do sign language. So if they, if, if they want to say um, they love you, they put their hand like that. And, and this, mor this morning I was doing a, an advert for Dutch television for something called the Postcode Lottery. And suddenly I put my hand like that. And, and I suddenly thought, I've been inspired by an 18 month <laughs> yeah, old baby. Um, but um, now I think uh, adults can learn a lot from children. Um, and adults should be more childlike, I think. Um, a lot of adults start taking themselves too seriously when they grow up. And um, uh, so be Peter Pan, never grow up. <laughs> Yes. You were a little bit older, older than us were now when you dropped out of school. How did your parents react to that? Well, I was 15. I um, wanted to start a magazine um, to uh, campaign against issues in the world that I thought were wrong, like the Vietnamese War. And, uh, and, um, and I remember walking around the garden with my dad Initially, he said, you know, you've really got to get educated first. And then uh, after we'd been around the garden about six times, he said, well, at least you know what you want to do. And that, you know, when you're 15, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was 21. So give it a go. And if it works out, great. And if it doesn't, we'll try to get you an education. And, and the education I got ready was running this magazine and getting out and interviewing people, meeting people. Um, and it was, you know, turned out to be the right thing, I think, for me, anyway. Did you ever have points along your journey where you considered you had second thoughts about your decision to drop out of school? The only time I thought I needed to go back and get an education <laughs> was when I turned 40. And, um, uh, and uh, you know, so maybe a midlife, midlife crisis. And um, my wife turned to me and said, you just want to go to university and chat up all those young girls. You just get straight back to work. So that was the closest I got to going, going to back to a formal education. Um, now, I love learning. I mean, I, I mean I, I learn, I'm learning every day, meeting wonderful people every day. Um, uh, I love listen. You know, I'm a, a good listener. I think one, one of the mistakes a lot of people make is they just want to hear their own voice all the time. But, um, but the only way to learn is, yeah, to listen, listen, listen. And, and, and so I'm a, I think I'm a good listener. And uh, as a leader of people, you, you've, got to, you've got to be a good listener. Right. And do you have any advice for us? I mean, as teenagers and uh, into adults. How old are you now? Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. How old are you? Thirteen as well. 13. Okay. It's funny. I met um, I met my first girlfriend, who I haven't seen for fifty years, when I was thirteen. Um, I, I was with her till I was nineteen, and um, she was Dutch. And I met her met her for lunch today, the first time in fifty years. So it was quite strange for both of us, um, but. Um, um, but it was very nice. I met her children as well. Um, but um, I think I think the only advice I would give is just um, you know do what you enjoy in life. Don't um, get, don't get stuck in some boring job that don't let you have holidays or breaks or do things that you you know. I mean, try to try to make sure you find something that interests you. So maybe if you have a hobby or something, try to pursue your hobby as your your, your as your life. Um, if you've got an idea to make other people's lives better, um, you've got a business idea. Therefore, you know, start your own business. Um, 
but um, yeah, but life's there to have fun and, and, and enjoy it. And yeah, throw yourself wholeheartedly into it. Have the big smile like you have at the moment. And, and, um, uh, and it's great what you're doing. Just, I mean, just do, do, doing these interviews is a tremendous way of learning. And um, I congratulate you both. <laughs> you are famous, rich, and a little bit crazy. Would you ever be jealous of Donald Trump? I think Donald Trump is one of the most dangerous men on earth. <laughs> um, I think he's a racist. Um, and I think that um, we've got to do everything we can to make sure he's never president of America. I think um, America one day should have a entrepreneur running its country. Um, but he is the absolute wrong entrepreneur. He, he um, uh, you know, the, the things he said about women, the things he said about um, uh, anybody who's not white in his country, the things he said about, um, I mean, you, you name it, um, it's an embarrassment. And, um, and when you compare him to um, uh, you know, President Obama or Hillary Clinton, uh, he's, um, you know, he's, he's a class down there. So, um, uh, so uh, no, I'm not, I'm definitely not um, jealous about, <laughs> about uh, Trump and, um, and I hope sense prevails in America because you know, whoever runs America is effectively very influential in the whole world and we need somebody who's um, a safe, safe pair of hands. Would you ever consider running for president yourself? <laughs> Um, well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm British, uh, and therefore that, that, that option would never exist. Um, now, I've, I've always felt I, I, I don't get involved in politics, but I do get involved in issues. Um, so, like, tonight I'm flying to California uh, to try to campaign to get the death, the death penalty abolished. It, it, it spe speaking out on issues, I think, is important. But we do need good people for politicians, and uh, you two should one day maybe consider that. <laughs> All right, thank you very thank much. You so thank you so much. <laughs> Good luck tonight. Nice thank to see you. you. Thanks a lot. You're going to interview Al Gore today? <laughs> no? No. Oh, come on. We'll go, we'll, I'll, bring you to, I'll bring you to his room after this, and we'll see if we can try to sure, do it. Sure, why not? Yeah, why not? Hi. Can I get to that part? Of course. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Uh, nice to meet you. Great. What's your name? Sienna. Hi, Sienna. And what's your name? Armel. What is Ormo. Ormo? Yeah. Nice to meet you both. Right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Come, did you have, come, come in for did you have fun yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, interviewing him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, we had, a, we had a lot of fun. And oh, they're, they're, good. They're and who are you filming for? Yeah. The children's correspondent. Okay. The I, don't children, wanna, the I don't want to do it. I don't want to do an interview okay. on okay. camera okay. right we, now. Okay. We, we want film. Thank you. Just say hi to them. Yeah.